Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kid and Cloud of Coloring Classes and today I'm going to be showing you how to color a really simple rainbow flower technique that you can use on absolutely any image at all. Now we've got a really cute little simple image that I'm using this on today. Uh, so many images have little tiny flowers that you can incorporate this technique on or you can go bigger and can combine it with some of the floral techniques that we teach in some of our other free classes to do a rainbow effect on a more detailed flower. Now this tutorial here today is actually one of the chapters from our brand new Grand Gardens Coloring Class, which is our June 2021 coloring project over at kiddingclouder.com. If you're already one of our class members, breaking down your classes into smaller goals like this can be a great way to start if you're a little bit nervous or only have that limited amount of time to jump in and color. It's all about taking that mindful break for you to recharge and de-stress. But if you'd like to color the rest of this image with me, pop over to our website as well to find out more details about our class. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now when coloring any object, it's important to first keep in mind light source. Now light source is anything that makes light in our scenes and it's really important because without it, we don't see anything. It's what determines the light and shade of an object to give it form. Now typically in our classes, we work with what's called ambient lighting, which is a major source of light in a scene like the sun or overhead lighting, which casts big cones of light over your entire image. So rather than spotlighting, which is like one side light, one side dark, the way that we look at ambient lighting is the light hits parts of the objects or the image that are raised up towards you. So those light rays come down and hit those parts first. And the parts that are further back or slanting away from those light rays end up in shadow. Now where those light rays hit first, we call that our highlight. It's the lightest and brightest part. Now the opposite of that, where the light rays hit last, we call that our shadow. It's the darkest part. And between our highlight and shadow, we have mid-tone. And mid-tone is gen generally considered the true color of an object because it's neither affected by light or shade. And one more extra thing as well that we want to keep in mind that helps us to get a lot of depth is something called a cast shadow. Now a cast shadow is a shadow that's cast by an object in front or above something else. So notice that shadow on my hand there. It's cast by my pencil extender here sitting over the top and it's showing the distance between these objects. The closer the objects are, the darker and harder that shadow is. And the further apart they are, the softer and more dispersed they become. So when people come to our classes, one of the number one things they ask about is how do I get more depth in my projects? And learning about light source is how you do that. So I'm just going to start us out nice and simple on one of these little flowers here today. Really fun technique. You can see we've got all different colors here. We've got the purple, pink, we've got a peach, a green and a blue. And we're going to fade each of these colors into the yellow here. Now, when we're coloring our flowers, there's a couple of things we want to think about. And firstly, that's that light source that we were already talking about before. Now, remember, I mentioned before, whatever we color as the lightest part is going to look like it's popping out towards you. Now, when we color flowers, we want to keep in mind all of that light source that we've just talked about. And remember, I explained before, the parts that we color as the lightest are going to appear raised up versus the parts that are going to appear darker, which will appear further down. So when we color flowers and we look at flower petals, whenever we add these little darker lines like through the middle here, what that's indicating is that we've got something like a crease. So notice I'm putting my two hands together here and how it's darker in between. That's because I'm blocking the light out and I'm effectively making a crease with my hands. So that's actually what we're showing when we come to do something like this in the flower. And I'm just going to talk about this one here. I'll move this over to the middle. Can you see in this little flower here, what I've actually done is I've got two little lines that go through the center of the flower and in between those lines, it's nice and light. What this is indicating is I've got a little raised up ridge here in the middle and then the two sides are slanting down and away from that light. 
So that's another way that you can approach it as well. You can use the lighter area to create ridges and the darker areas to show directional changes on the sides. And this is what I'm going to show you here today because it's a really simple way to create texture and detail and really simple florals. You'll notice as well when we color petals, they're generally all darker in toward the center of the flower. That's because the petals all come in and they sit underneath that sort of center point there. And they pop out from that side. So usually the middle, always the darkest. We're not really seeing that so much with this flower because we've got that two-tone effect. So instead of just blending out to the lightest color on the edges, I'm swapping into a yellow so we can play around with getting that two-tone really pretty soft effect. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to pop this off to the side. I'm going to do this nice big flower in the middle here today. Now I'm just going to start by adding a little bit of color to the center. Now I've got my golden rod pencil and all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this just really softly just to the base. We always want to keep in mind a little bit of, of light source even when we're coloring small objects like this. We want everything to be consistent in our scenes and that will help it have the most depth. So I've added the shadow around the edges to make it look like the middle of that center is the highest point and the sides are all curving down. Now grabbing canary yellow, I'm just going straight over the top and blending in toward that middle. So that's my center all done nice and easy. Now with this canary yellow, this is our two-tone color. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to apply this just lightly from the edges. Now the reason why I'm doing this first is it's a nice and light color and it's going to make sure I don't forget to add it in. Sometimes when we're using a two-tone color like this, we kind of get carried away with the darker colors in the middle and we get to the end and we haven't really left enough color for it. So we lose that two-tone effect. So by applying this in lightly now, I can see exactly where that's going to be and I'm going to remember to make room for it. This effect works really nicely when you're blending into a really soft or really bright color on those edges. So try not to go for something too dark when you're doing that two-tone effect. It's going to be a little bit harder to make it all pop out. Okay, now let's jump in and add our color. So I'm going to start on this little petal here. Now remember we talked about doing the two lines through the center to create the raised ridge. Now whether your image has this drawn in or not, you can add in your own lines. You don't always have to stick with what the artist has drawn. This image here is quite light, so I have the ability to really come in and add my own detail lines. Now you'll see I've drawn in those two lines and I'm shading away from the middle. So I'm shading toward the sides. I'm keeping my pressure nice and soft on the pencil. And that's going around about halfway. I'm just letting the color fade out but we're just keeping it really nice and light and soft. Then I grab my hot pink and again I'm shading away from that middle point. I'm coming over the previous colors and I'm just extending a little further out. It's really important with pencils that we layer nice and soft and we don't use a lot of pressure. It's better to do multiple soft layers than come in too hard too fast because then that's when we lose a little bit of that control. Now I've got a little bit of deco pink and this is a really nice light color and it's fading away my pinks. And you can see I'm even overlapping with where that canary yellow was laid the first time around. But the canary yellow is quite soft now. Now what I can do is grab my canary yellow and come back in this other direction. Overlapping the colors is really important when you have a two-tone look. It's what makes it look seamless. So you never want to start one color where another stops. It's always going to look really hard if you do that. Overlap the colors and it'll make it appear nice and soft and smooth. Now the first time you use the colors, if you've been light-handed, you may see some little white speckles showing through your blending. That's just the tooth of the paper and it means that you can actually hold more layers of pigment on the paper. So that's actually a good thing. So we want to come in again. This is my process red. 
and I can literally just repeat the previous steps to build up more color depth. So the more pigment layers I'm getting, the more vibrant my colors become and the more control I have over the blend. Make sure you keep it nice and soft. We don't increase the pressure with the later layers, but what we do is we make our strokes maybe a little bit smaller and making sure that you always work with a sharp pencil and that's what's going to penetrate that tooth and soften it all flat. Hot pink is next. And you can see I'm just blending this out exactly like I did the first time around. Now if your gap in the middle here is huge, I mean you can start to blend that in a little bit. Mine's, I'm pretty happy with the size there. I want it a little bit lighter so it really pops out. I get a little bit of that contrast. And then I've got my deco pink again blending softly into that canary yellow. Now that will tone the yellow a little bit. It'll make it a little bit more orange based because you've added a little bit of that red over the yellow. So let's come back with canary yellow and again overlap with where that deco pink has ended. And that's one little simple two-tone petal. Now let's keep do going and doing the other ones as well. So now I'm going to do a purple blend. So I've got my Parma Violet and I'm just going to do this into the next petal at the bottom here. Now make sure those pencils are nice and sharp. Always easier to do small details with sharp pencils. And I'm just blending out to either side away from that center. Next color is lavender. And again, the same thing. I'm just blending that away. Now this color is not as soft as the deco pink, so you may notice that this will blend into the yellow and be a little harsh. Now another problem we come into here is that yellow and purple are actually complementary colors. Now what that means is they're opposites on the color wheel. So when we blend these two colors in together, what happens is we make a neutral. We end up actually making a gray or quite a muddy color. So we want to avoid a little bit of that. We want to be careful that we're not getting sort of that really icky color in between. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my white pencil and I'm going to fade out the purple sort of just before it hits the yellow. So instead of using a lighter purple, which we don't really have available in this brand that I'm using at the moment anyway, I've just got my white, which is going to blend that out. Then what I can do is I can grab my canary yellow and apply this over the top and where that white was going to go. This way I avoid that muddiness, but I still have that nice rich two-tone look. And again, if you feel like you've got some of that tooth showing with your purples, you can always repeat as well. We all color differently and with slightly different amounts of pressures. So you may need more or less layers than I do when you're beginning and that's absolutely okay. So I'll always just leave that up to you if you need to keep going. You can always press pause on the video and come back as well. Next color blend I'm going to be using is blue. Now this petal here is a little different. Can you see this little part on the bottom? What that is is you've got your petal here and it's coming back and curving like this. Now what this has done is you've basically created a top lip. And now we want to think about the petal as being two sections. We've got this section underneath and this section above. Now this section here being above is going to cast the shadow straight underneath on this object behind. So where we have this little lip, we want to think about right under that we're going to get a bit of a darker color there to show that we've got different levels happening. So I'm using Copenhagen blue and I'm just coming straight underneath and adding in that cast shadow. Then I'm going to do my two lines in from the center and blend away from that center point. So it always makes it a little bit tricky with those two tone effects. So we're gonna be thinking about the end of the petal being nice and light up here. I'm also gonna add a little bit of color to the bottom of this part of the top lip. That was probably a confusing sentence. So you've got the top lip here, the bottom part, the part that's curving right around, typically will be a bit darker because it's the furthest point and it's curving, it's not just ending. 
So now what we do is we're going to blend out and I've got Caribbean Sea. So we're blending out to the sides of that petal. And then when you've got that cast shadow, we'll blend out the cast shadow. And then on the top lip, we're blending in toward that top edge. So that little edge there is that highest point. And we can get a little bit lighter as well. I've got sky blue light here. Now make sure you've left enough room for that canary yellow. If your blue is quite strong, don't forget you can always fade it out with a little bit of white pencil. But I bring in my canary yellow just on that edge and even into the side a little bit here as well. All right, next color, I'm going to do some greens. And what you'll notice as well with this rainbow effect, I'm basically falling around the color wheel. So I've got my blue, purple, pink, like it's all going in order of that color wheel, which makes it look the most natural to our eye as well. So rather than sort of skipping and jumping between, having that natural progression whenever you're doing rainbow blends will always make it look the most visually aesthetically pleasing. Okay, cobalt turquoise is next. And we're just doing the same thing. So aesthetically pleasing, I don't know if any of you have heard that term. It's typically taught in art schools a lot. So what that means is just something that the general person will find pleasing to the eye. And that's why working with color wheel theories can be really helpful if you're trying to decide on like color schemes to use. Light green is my next color, we're just blending out to the sides. And I've got information on that in our Facebook group as well. If you remember, you can always pop in and search color wheel. We go through that in a lot of our classes as well. Now this color was maybe a little dark, so I'm going to use my white pencil and I can fade those edges. Going to come in with a little bit of canary yellow as well. And you can repeat if necessary. I'll leave that up to you. And then we have one color left and it's my peachy tones. I've got salmon pink. Now I've gone for peach rather than a strong orange. I just wanted it because it was more of like that pretty pastel color. But you can do this technique here today with any colors at all that you prefer. So you don't feel like you have to stick with this particular color scheme. You can always play around with this technique with other blends as well and I've got a whole bunch of free color blends you can try over on our website at kidandclatter.com. Just click the blend charts tab and you'll find a whole lot of color blend examples there for you to play with. So experiment with this technique. Light peach is next. And experiment with the way you can use it. Just because I'm showing you a flower here today doesn't mean you can't use it in an outfit or hair or anything at all get creative with techniques that you're learning use them on different projects as well canary yellow here coming back remember you don't learn everything in one lesson a little bit of repetition and going over a technique a few times is going to make it embed in your mind so we really need to go over things a couple of times to help make it second nature for you and make it a technique that you're going to call upon when you do color your own images so don't ever feel ashamed for having to pop on a video again to go over things like light source or how did we blend that color together because all that's doing is actually teaching you don't feel like you always have to master everything on the first go round and that's just one simple flower all colored up now remember, this is part of a bigger scene, so at the moment, it's only a really small little detail. But in our class, we're taking you from this to this. It's all about how each individual technique comes together at the end to create all your focus and to create this project. But don't let those things feel overwhelming. When we do a big scene like this, all we do is just break it down in exactly what we've done here today. 
one step at a time, super easy. We go step by step to help it be easy for you so you can create a finished scene like this easily as well. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this quick lesson on how to color up a rainbow flower. I'd love to see you try this on any image at all and with any color blends and practice as well. Remember, coloring takes time and practice to learn, so your results may not instantly be the same as mine or others you may see. But the more you practice, the easier it gets. Every mistake is actually a lesson to learn from and it's something that you can try and incorporate for next time. The only failure you ever have is never starting as that's the only time you can never grow. So if you'd like to color the rest of this image with me, please come and join me over at kidandclatter.com to view our new Grand Gardens coloring class. This class gives you lifetime access so you can work at your own pace. You can take your time absorbing and going over each of these techniques and we'll be breaking down all the very basics just like we have here today. So it's a great class for beginners as well. Nothing to feel overwhelmed about. I don't ever have any locking contracts or timeframes with our classes as well. So you can come and join in with no pressure at all. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and hope to see you share your coloring. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.